I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesofAccounting.com, Chapter 14, and in this module the topic is Treasury Stock. Treasury Stock are shares of a company's own stock that it has reacquired. So a company buys back its own shares from in the marketplace. Why would a company do this? Well, they might think the value of the company is not fully appreciated by the market, and they view it as simply a good investment to buy back shares to use cash of the company to reduce the number of outstanding shares. The company might be going through some type of reorganization or delisting from a public exchange or be, being taken private and some of the share reacquisition occurs via the treasury stock method. Or the company might be acquiring shares pursuant to an employee stock award plan. So they buy back shares so that they can transfer them to their employees as part of a compensation award. Importantly, gains and losses are ordinarily not recognized on treasury stock transactions and reported income. There are some very limited exceptions to those, but we won't even concern ourselves with those. Let's hold to the general rule, gains and losses on treasury stock are not reported in income. Very simply, when treasury stock is acquired, we debit an account treasury stock, which is a contra equity account, as we'll see in a moment, and credit cash for the proceeds, or the, I should say the cost of the shares. So here we've bought back one million in treasury shares, we've debited treasury stock and credited cash one million to buy back 40,000 treasury shares at a price of $25 a share. In the stockholders equity section, we have not affected the total amount of common stock. That is, this company has common stock, one dollar par value, two million shares authorized, 400,000 shares issued, but there's only 360,000 shares outstanding. The 40,000 are held in treasury, but we still have 400,000, the number of shares issued times the par value per share, 400,000. So we're not affecting that part. There was no journal entry to those accounts when we bought the treasury stock. What we instead do is show an account, a contra equity account, less the cost of treasury stock, 40,000 shares at a cost of a million dollars. Our total stockholders equity is now only 62 million instead of 63 million as it was before we bought back the shares. We used a million dollars of cash and we acquired treasury stock that caused the million dollar contraction in equity. If treasury shares are subsequently reissued, cash is to be debited for the amount received, We'll credit treasury stock for the cost of the shares that are reissued. Any difference could ordinarily be debited or credited to paid in capital. Here I'm assuming that we resold some of the treasury shares at $40 a share. We got 400,000 cash therefore, so we debit cash 400,000. Remember our treasury stock cost us $25 a share, so we're crediting for the 10,000 shares we reissued, we're crediting treasury stock 250,000, 10,000 shares at $25 a piece. And in a sense, we made 150000 on this so-called investment in our own stock. We'll credit that as an additional capital contribution of $150,000. Again, no gain or loss recorded there. In some limited cases, you might debit retained earnings if you reissue treasury shares for uh, less than you paid for them. It's a bit of an exception where you would see that, but it is a possibility.